Ricky tells the story of he was there in Kuwait when the evil eyes finished that mission they started when they lost Jordan. Seeing the faces of the crew chiefs coming off of the aircraft when they touched down in Kuwait. And they're, I know the Marines, when they're on deployment, have a job to do, and you don't think about that part of it. That when they lose someone, and then they have to pick up and carry on. And so that just the support that you guys give is just no words to express the gratitude. This year we were able to pull off the uh, Washington DC Memorial Walk. Uh, we had done it two years ago in New York. This year is, uh, we brought it to Washington DC, which is where we plan on doing it on an annual basis. Uh, the event this year was uh, a smashing success. We had over 200 participants uh, throughout the nation, uh, 140 in Washington DC with us and uh, over 70 at remote locations, both in Pensacola, Florida and Lemoore. Uh, so this event has become the staple of the Wingman Foundation. Our, our intent is to have it on an annual basis. Uh, we want to have it, or we will have it at multiple locations throughout the country. And we would like to get possibly Okinawa and some other places involved. The reason that this is important to the Wingman Foundation is because every single mile we stop and we talk about people that are no longer here. Really, the plan is to walk 20 miles. Hopefully everybody understands that. Uh, you can walk as much or, or as little of that as you want. Uh, but the way it's going to break down is we walk a mile at a pretty quick pace. So the goal is to walk a mile in about 20 minutes, stop, get the, the group together, pause for about seven to eight minutes to talk about that mile's mishap and that mile's crew, and then do it again for 19 more miles. Um, thanks to actually two of our supporters, uh, Gwen Kander and, and Kelly Pitt, and their husband and wife team. Uh, Kelly's a former uh, he's a former Marine aviator, and uh, him and his wife just they put together a walk in New York City a couple years ago. They really wanted to continue to do that. They saw it as a big, you know, as a very emotional, powerful experience, um, great for healing for people, but just reflection. And it wasn't a race. It wasn't anything where you know we're trying to uh, to break up the group or anything. It was just mainly being together over the course of a day, going through a, a strenuous task and remembering those that we lost. Well, at first I thought I couldn't do 20 miles, but I did. <laughs> but no, it was really good, um, and it did spur you on. And I was all for it. I mean, I, I, I mean, in it and going and enjoyed it. And you know, it's just kind of cool to do something. Everybody's doing the same thing. Not to mention, of course, the, my, the main thing where you're honoring each one every mile and some of these and hearing their stories is, yes. is really... Uh, and that's what uh, kept me going. And even we tried walking at home, getting ready for this, but you know, we might do 10 miles a whole weekend. I'm going, well, the math isn't adding up here. We're supposed to do 20 in one day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I was driven by the other families and the other crew members, let's say, the people that knew these lost ones and wanted to hear their stories, To wanted to go to the end and hear them all. And mm -hmm. to be, you know, to be a, to keep the numbers up, let's say, of the walk, so to show the support for them as well. On this last walk, I had the, uh, had the fortunate opportunity to, to, to do the entire walk and, and to walk with Gold Star family members, uh, some of which I maybe have talked to on the phone or email, but had never met. And one of the Gold Star mothers said something that has become a bit of a tagline at Wingman. And she said, and she was talking about her son who was killed in the helicopter crash. She said, if you continue to speak their names, they will never be forgotten. Well, I think the like the driving force behind this is is my obviously immediate connection with uh, aviation. Uh, having lived in that life for close to a decade and and knowing, you know, so many people either directly involved with or, or closely involved with uh, mishaps over the years. Um, for instance, Jordan Spears, you know, kind of the, the genesis of the, the uh, Wingman Foundation back in October, that, that event was 163. 
that was my old squadron. I knew the pilots involved. I, I knew uh, several of the uh, people in the squadron that were, you know, um, there for that. And so that that impacts you. That hits home. Um, you know, having known people that ha that we've lost, um, you know, in mishaps. And uh, so it's just, it's your way to stay connected, I think, to, you know, we, we all join for a reason. And then when you leave the Marine Corps, you still have that inside you that you want to you wanna stay connected to some degree. And so my passion now, my pursuit in, in, in life in, in one degree is through sport and through endurance sports. And that's where my passion lies. And, and so that was, some way to still have a connection to to the Marine Corps to give back um, to to be able to help out and uh, those that you know have um, have basically paid that price and uh, made that sacrifice. The the purpose of the endurance team really is to is to just go out and, and, and interact with the public and, and show a positive light to the Wingman Foundation. Uh, unfortunately, with mishap response, it can get a little dark at times around here. Uh, and from an operations perspective, I was concerned that if every time we say something, it was just asking money for a mishap or telling people that, hey, aviation is dangerous and whatnot, that even though that's very true and very important, especially the fundraising portion, it's, well, it's, not a very, it's just not a very fun thing to talk about quite a bit. We are very lucky to have some quality athletes already wanting to work with us uh, and go out there and do their thing. I want our name to be synonymous with sport in any aspect, to, to pushing the limits of, of, you know, what humans are capable of, of accomplishing physically. And that's always been something that's intrigued me, um, why I'm into endurance sports and pushing myself on a regular basis. Uh, the Marine Corps was one facet of that in, in achieving something and setting your goals high and and now sport is another another way I'm able to do that and to push and you see that throughout all of sport and I like the Wingman Foundation to be synonymous with that to have athletes that are not only involved in endurance sports like cycling biking running but you know people that are climbing mountains that are that are accomplishing these monumental tasks that may seemingly be impossible to others um, and but are now inspirational to other people. Over the past year or so, we've been actually getting a lot more involved in the community. And one of the things that was really a, a big sign that we were, you know, making the right moves was uh, we we got um, Assembly Member Rocky Chavez reached out to us and wanted to do an event uh, to support some Gold Star families, and uh, we were able to uh, use his office as like a a way to reach out to the community that we may not actually do uh, touch, which is you know in in the San Diego, northern San Diego County, some just local businessmen, supporters of the assembly member, but just interested citizens who wanted to hear about what we do, and we were able to raise some, some money to help uh, deliver some, some gift cards and donations to some Gold Star families around the holidays. You know, when you look at foundations, you kind of say, well, if I give money, how much is this is being washed away with people making money? All the people are, that have run the Wingman Foundation are volunteers. 97% of the money that everybody gives goes to help the military. The only 3% they have is for their websites, to, for, for things like this. But it's all going to help the people. And that's exactly during this season of giving that we really care about. You know, it's not about us making money, it's about helping somebody else. And it was the, the, probably the, the biggest, most striking thing about that event with uh, Assemblymember Chavez was the fact that you know, he reached out to us, knew about some of the good things we we're doing and wanted to know more. And as soon as we told him what we do and, and the kind of impact we make, he was even more impressed and you know, really tried to, to support us the best way he could. And so that's kind of like the, that level of validation that you know, we're doing the right thing, but we need to continue to focus on you know, what we've been doing for the past couple of years to keep making that impact that we were looking for.
It's very important for us as the Marine Corps and Navy to stop when we possibly, when we can and remember our fallen air warriors, whether they were in the air with us um, or on the ground uh, or just, you know, a tactical air controller. It's, it's taking a tragedy and making something good out of a bad situation and I don't see how in the most it's turning a bad thing into a positive. And that, that if you could do good for other people, I'm sure he would look down and be okay with that and he would be proud of that in a way because he always wanted to help others. He would help the homeless and uh, give money to the guys on the streets and stuff. And he was very compassionate. And I could mm -hmm. see him giving a big thumbs up to, oh, yeah. you, to, to the work that you guys do. Yeah. On a personal basis, it has, it's, it's definitely changed me, but I believe it's changed me for the better. Uh, I, I understand humanity and I understand human beings a little bit better now. Uh, I understand myself a little bit better now. Uh, and it just, it just strengthens my desire for this place or the Wingman Foundation to, to continue. It just, it needs to exist because without the Wingman Foundation, there's gonna be a lot of families that go without and, and that doesn't need to happen. Well, marks a loss of four lives. 50 miles off the coast of Camp Hamilton, California on 26 January, 2007. This event and this mishap took place on Wednesday, February 22nd, 2012. I'm um, talking about the, the Unfortunate accident that happened uh, the 12th of May, 2015, Nepal. We're at mile 11, HMH 464, 2 September 2015. His mishap happened June 2nd, 2016. Um, and he left behind his amazing wife, Christina, and two small children. And I will tell you, it's the Wingman Foundation that has helped support them and help them rebuild. But he is sorely missed. And he is always in our hearts. Um, we have a saying that a man whose name is spoken never dies. And that's my prayer is that we will never, ever forget